So did Jesus plagiarize and did he actually believe that he was the Messiah? We're going to talk about that today as we examine the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Gospel of Luke. Let's go. What is up everyone and welcome to the Puzzle Bees XG. My name is Steven Rodriguez. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So today I'm going to be talking about 4Q521. You're probably like, what? What? 4Q521 actually is a Dead Sea Scroll fragment. I've done some videos recently on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Make sure to check those videos out. Most recently, I did a video on the cataloging system of the Dead Sea Scrolls because we have so many fragments in so many different locations. Others, uh, we have to have a way to be able to keep track of those and so there's a, a certain cataloging system that is in place so that video kind of breaks that down and I actually reference 4q521 so cheap plug go ahead and watch the video if you want and so you a little bit know a little more in depth on that cataloging system so 4q521 4 stands for cave number four uh, there are 11 caves in Qumran 521 stands for the fragment or scroll number that has been cataloged so 521st uh, manuscript or fragment number and so this is also known as the Messianic Apocalypse because it references a Messiah figure who's able to do liberative and miraculous works. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick up in line number seven. Uh, these look like verse numbers, but they're actually line numbers. A couple other things to note, anytime you see a bracket with text in it, that's an educated guess. There's a gap there, but that's an educated guess of what the text actually says. And if there are any uh, brackets with uh, little dot, dot, dots, ellipses, we actually have, uh, there is no text there and we really don't know anything what it says and so we just kind of leave it blank and so i like having fun on this channel right the more that i do this channel the more that i find ways that i just love doing things a little bit different and so i'm gonna have fun with this if you'll indulge me i'm gonna go ahead and change the music up on this a little bit being that this is, is an epic uh find and fragment right the messianic apocalypse i'm gonna go ahead and change the music a little bit and change my voice so here we go or he will honor the pious upon the throne of an eternal kingdom Freeing prisons, giving sight to the blind, straightening out the twisted, and forever shall I cling to those who hope in, in his mercy, and the fruit of not be delayed, and the Lord will perform marvelous acts such as have not existed, just as he said, for he will heal the badly wounded, and will make the dead to live, he will proclaim good news to the poor. So, guys, see, I like to have fun with it a little bit. But what we have here are a quotation from Psalm 146. That's the freeing prisoners giving sight to the blind, straightening out the twisted portion. In that last, uh, that last phrase, proclaim good news to the poor, is found in Isaiah 61. So what makes this particular fragment so significant is that it has parallels with the Gospel of Luke, specifically Luke chapter 7. Now, this actual fragment wasn't actually uh, published until 1992, so it's fairly recent and relatively speaking. So if we look at Luke chapter 7, this is actually the account of John the baptizer, right? He's in prison and he's he's sending out his own disciples to Jesus to ask him, are you the one that we are to expect or should we expect someone else, right? Are you this awaited Messiah? And this is Jesus' response. He says, and he answered them, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear the dead are raised up the poor have good news preached to them now this is actually a symphony of illusions and quotations from isaiah 35 isaiah 61 and psalm 146 but what is interesting in none of these passages has it have any reference uh, reference of the messiah being able to raise the dead. Interestingly, 4Q521 actually has this reference of a Messiah figure being able to make the dead live. So the question I ask at the, at the, at the onset of this, did Jesus plagiarize? No, Jesus did not plagiarize, but what he did do was confirm some of the expectations that are already going around in these communities. And one of those, at least, was this idea of the Messiah figure being able to raise the dead. And so he's wanting to let John the baptizer know the type of Messiah that he was going to be. He was going to be a conquering Rome by the sword type of Messiah. No, he was going to be a suffering servant type of Messiah. He was going to be the type of Messiah that was going to proclaim good news to the poor, to be able to release the captives, be able to bring restoration to the blind, to make the lame walk, right? And to make the dead come to life. And so that was the type of Messiah that he was going to be. And it's just really interesting that we have 
a fragment some hundred years prior to Christ. A community was already, as they were studying scripture, coming to this, this idea that there was gonna, the Messiah was going to be able to do miraculous works, even raise the dead. That what, that's what makes this fragment so significant. And so uh, hopefully future videos I'll be able to do maybe a little more in-depth studies on uh, this particular section because there's more for me to unpack here. This is just kind of an overview of 4Q521 and its parallel with the Gospel of Luke. But there is actually a lot more to go into. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any new content like this. Until next time, guys, you guys know the deal. Keep putting those puzzle pieces together. God bless.